Thank you very much, Katie. Awesome. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Carla Bennett. I'd like to welcome you all here to the Sterling First United Methodist Church. We're so glad you've come to worship with us this morning, either in person or via live stream. There's several announcements, so please bear with me as I read through these. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. The church office will be closed Monday, November 22nd through Friday, November 26th, and there will be no Wednesday night activities in observance of the holiday. If you need pastoral care, please contact Pastor Amy. Uh, we will be hosting our annual church charge conference this year on November 30th at 6. The slide says that November 6th, but it's actually November 30th at 6 p.m. The district superintendent will be here to meet, uh, will be here as we meet and worship with other Rice County UMC churches to celebrate the ministry that has occurred in 2021. The Goodfellows Angel Tree is up in the narthex. Please take an angel and then between now and December 12th, purchase a gift for the child on the angel uh, and place your gift under the tree. The gifts will be delivered to Goodfellows on November 13th or December 13th and the gifts can be dropped off at the church office or under the narthex Christmas angel tree. Poinsettias are available for the Christmas season if you would like to purchase a poinsettia in memory or in honor of someone. Submit the form from the welcome desk and your payment in the offering plate or by the church office by December 15th. Poinsettias are $13 and for those wanting to order but unable to attend in person, please contact the church office. We would also like to welcome Janice Surface, who is joining our church staff team as our new administrative assistant. Jan enjoys spending time with her two sons, her daughter, and their families. She has six grandchildren and enjoys watching them play sports and attending their school activities. We're thrilled she's joined us here. Please feel free to stop by the office and introduce yourself. Um, one more announcement, the M&Ms will meet tomorrow in the parlor classroom at 7, so if you don't know what M&M's is, it's, um, it's our United Methodist Women's Group that we have here in the church, and so all ladies, please feel free to come and join us tomorrow at 7 in the parlor classroom. And then finally, just a reminder, as we near the Advent season, we'll be decorating the church today following the service. And if we can be in prayer for you, please let us know via the church office because we'd love to be praying for you in any way that we can. Are there any other announcements? If not, please turn your attention to the worship team as we prepare our hearts for worship. Well, good morning, church. As we transition into a time of worship this morning, I'd love to just read just a few verses from Psalm 103. And it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisf satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So as we hear those words of all of the goodness that God gives us, how can we do anything but rejoice? So let's stand together as we worship this morning. Come and stand, come and stand before your maker, full of wonder, full of fear. Come behold his power and glory, yet with confidence draw near. For the one who holds the heavens and commands the stars above is the God who bends to bless us with an unrelenting love. Rejoice! And lift your hands and raise your voice. He is 
Father God, thank you so much for the blessing it is to have so much to be thankful for and so much to rejoice over because our hope, our life, our love, our grace, our mercy, all of that is found in you, God. You have done so much for us. You paid the ultimate price of sending your son to die on the cross for us so that we could have this relationship with you, so that you could be our Lord and Savior. And God, for that, how can we be anything but thankful? And God, even in those times in our lives that seem so dark, that seem empty, God, even in those times, you are there. And you're calling to us, even as quietly as a whisper, saying, come, follow me, trust me. So God, I just pray that we would hear that call today, that we would hear your call pulling us alongside you to walk with you, to pray with you, to cry with you, to laugh with you. God, let the thankfulness we have and let the grace you have given inspire us to do something, to share that with others. Because when we truly feel that joy and that peace that comes from you, when we truly understand your grace, how can we do anything but share it? It's too good to keep to ourselves, God. So I just pray that we would hear that call to walk with you and to share you with others. And God, as we continue to worship, let that be our cry to you this morning. We love you so much, Father, and we praise you, and we pray all of this in your name. Amen.
you call me out. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stay. abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now and I I will call. 
seated. Invite all the children to come forward. Children's time. Good morning. Are we tired this morning? Yes, man. This time change is still getting us, isn't it? Look, we have an all-girl all group today. That doesn't happen very often. So it's kind of cold out there, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not a fan of cold, but you know, at, least you, at least you can put a coat on. When you're hot, you're just hot, right? So it's been a, what is this week? Thanksgiving, a short school week. We have some vacation days. That's always fun, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. The teachers need a break. You need a break. It's a good time. Lots of good food, isn't it? Well, this morning, Pastor Amy is going to read scripture, and it's about a man named Philip. And he was traveling down the road one day, and God just randomly kind of said, hey, I think you need to go down this road. And he did, and he met this Ethiopian. It doesn't say what his name is. It just says he's an Eth Ethiopian. And he had been to worship in another town, and he worshiped a different God than Philip. But the Ethiopian was reading the book of Isaiah. And Philip noticed that, and he said, do you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian said, no, somebody's going to have to explain it to me. So Philip shared about Jesus with this Ethiopian, <coughs> and they kind of became friends for the moment. They talked about it. The Ethi Ethiopian learned about the Lord and Jesus, and they kind of walked on down the road a little ways and came upon a pond, and the Ethiopian wanted to be baptized. So Philip baptized him, and he became a Christian. And that's really about as much as we know about it. We don't know if they were friends forever. We really don't know anything about it other than the Ethiopian on the just random meeting on the road with Philip became a Christian. Well, what that kind of tells us is kind of, you know, hard to understand because we're not going to baptize somebody someday. But we can meet random friends along the way or people along the way, or children along the way, that maybe isn't somebody we would necessarily be friends with, but we can be kind to them, and they might notice that in you. And if sometime they, they might say, why are you being so nice to me? And you could just say, because I have Jesus in my heart. Because sometimes there are people that we might not necessarily associate with or be really good friends with. I've had when I coach volleyball, I've asked high school kids, why are you friends with that person? And I say, well, I don't do anything outside of school with them, but, I, but we're friends in school, and because not everybody is nice to them, I am. They're not necessarily best friends, but that's just something you can do. Philip met this random man on the road. He shared the word of God with him. They weren't friends forever, but it changed the Ethiopian's life forever. And that's just something you can do as you have friends and you can be nice to people. You can just say you have Jesus in your heart. I think Luca wants to join us. But anyway, as you go throughout life, even if you think that you this is going to be a best friend forever, you can always be nice and show Jesus' love to them. Okay? Let's pray. We just thank you, Lord, for these children. We just hope you give them a good week this week and enjoy their Thanksgiving. And uh, you bless us with these children. We're so happy that they're here. And uh, Lord, just guide them, just like you did, Philip, to um, share your word and be a good friend and with, with Jesus in their heart. Amen. Well, good morning. 
before we get today get to today's actual scripture reading, I want to talk a little bit about what it means to be full. Over the past few weeks, we've talked about being grateful and to live a heart with, with, of gratitude and grace, which in turn brings us to a worshipful life. Living a full life is more than just being well-fed physically. It's about living fully into the desires that Christ has for each one of us. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, we read that Jesus says, as he is speaking with his followers, that I have come so that you, so that you all may have life and have it abundantly or fully. A full life is more than, than just a mere uh, physical survival or living in a small sense of desperation. Living life in its fullest is, is, is thriving. It's thriving in body and soul and in spirit. And it's important for us to understand that Jesus was not just talking about an afterlife. When Jesus said this, he was not talking about an afterlife. He was talking about a present life. An abundant, full life is living with a sense of security, sufficiency, and meaning. We each are created to flourish. We are created to live in a realm of human flourishing that is the heart of Christ. That's his message. That's his hope. He died so that we can live fully. And for that, we can be so very thankful. We live fully when we live out his mission. For when we are full, Thanksgiving is more than a meal, it's more than a day, it is a life. It's an attitude that, that just oozes up and out over us and spews out onto all those around us. Isn't that a glorifying picture? Now, tucked away in the New Testament, in the 8th chapter of Acts, we find a man named Philip. And he's doing his very best to keep Jesus' words alive as he's moving out and about with the Spirit. Now, early in the chapter, we are told that Philip had been to Samaria to, Samaria to preach the good news about Jesus. It's important for us to understand that Philip said yes to the call to spread Jesus' message of love and salvation, despite the very real threat of persecution. But he was able to do all of it out of a sense of gratitude for what Christ had already done. His encounters with Christ had given him strength to endure into an unknown future in very uncertain times. As a result... As a result of Philip's openness to living out a full life, people who knew the Jews had long thoughts of enemies, that they had become, they were able to become a family in Christ. And there was great joy in the city that we read in Acts chapter 8, verse 8. Philip's yes to God led to the growth of joy and gratitude into a, in, in a community that Jews like Philip would have previously avoided at all costs. So now hear these words of what happened about an encounter that Philip had. And I'm reading from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 31a, and then jumping down to 35 through 39. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. 
This is a wilderness road. So he got up and he went. And now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of in her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to his chariot and join in. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and to sit beside him. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's some water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up up out of the water, the spirit snatched Philip away. But the eunuch saw him no more, but he went on his way rejoicing. The two parted ways. But the Ethiopian, the stranger, was estranged no more. He went away rejoicing. He went away fully recognized, fully embraced, fully included, fully known, fully, abundantly full and whole. Thanks be to God for those like Philip who take the time to listen and invest into the lives of others. Random encounters have the ability to be transformational if we are open and willing to be intentionally relational. I want to show you a picture here. There you go. Kind of an unlikely looking family. This is a picture that uh, and recently run, KWCH in Wichita recently reported this, a story via a CNN news source that originated out of a Phoenix affiliated station about another random encounter between two strangers who became unlikely friends. And it says this, it says, a Thanksgiving tradition is still going strong for two former strangers who met in 2016 after an accidental dinner invitation. Wanda Dench thought that she was sending out a text with a dinner invitation to her grandson. It turns out that he had changed his number. But Jamal Hinton got the message instead. The two figured out the mistake, and then they sent selfies to each other. That's when Hinton asked if he could still come over to her house for Thanksgiving in Mesa, Arizona. How cool is that? And Dench replied saying, of course you can. That's what grandmas do. They feed everyone. Now this started a holiday tradition that now is in its sixth year. Hinton has documented the holiday each year on social media. This year, Hinton took to Twitter to tell all of his followers that the two are still celebrating that day together with a picture of a text message of he and his girlfriend along with Dench and her late husband, Lonnie. Lonnie died in April 2020 following a battle with COVID-19, sadly. But even in the midst of sorrow and loss, 
because of a random chance encounter and a willingness to be open to joy and a willingness to share of themselves, each are able to walk away from from the Thanksgiving table full and rejoicing. So let me say this one more time. Random encounters have the ability to be transformational if we are open and willing to be intentionally relational. Now here is what is so beautiful about both of these stories. These were all encounters of the Spirit. None of these meetings, neither of these meetings, were free scheduled appointments. All parties involved were open to sharing their lives with someone else. Through each of these random encounters, lives were changed. They formed new relationships that gave each person a sense of a family, a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose. Now, when Philip agreed to walk down a road that is definitely off the beaten path, he likely did not anticipate that he would meet the Ethiopian, much less one who had just been in Jerusalem to worship at the temple. Jewish law stated that a eunuch or someone like the Ethiopian could not become a full member of the Jewish worshiping community. So when Philip meets the Ethiopian, he encounters someone who went to worship, who went to worship God in a place that did not fully accept him or let him truly be a part of their very own community. He was an outcast. The Ethiopian's isolated endeavors to seek out and to understand God The God that he worships is further illustrated in the fact that he is reading and wrestling with the passages from Isaiah all alone in his chariot. All along the way, Philip says yes. He says yes to walking this road. He says yes to coming alongside the chariot. And then he says yes to explaining the meaning of the passage of Isaiah 53, which proves to be such a beautiful opening to share about the good news of Jesus with this man who others had treated as not even good enough to worship God and to be included in a relationship with them. Philip who had just shared the gospel with the, with, with the Samaritans, now is saying yes to being a good neighbor to this stranger instead of shunning him, which is probably what he was raised to do. Philip is working counterculturally. Now let's jump to Wanda, the, the text-sending grandma. Her text, her erroneous text was also quite a surprise to Jamal as well. And neither one of them would have probably ever imagined sitting down to dinner with one another either. Wanda, Philip, the Ethiopian, and Jamal all said yes to living a full life. They took this this crazy chance, all of them, and they received abundant blessings. That, that is loving God. That's living out a worshipful life of gratefulness, to be able to look beyond ourselves, to really be able to see someone else, to really see them, to walk with them, to listen to them, to be in relationship with them, 
each person accepting the others for exactly just who they are, exactly for who God himself created each one to be. In both of these stories, I believe that all those involved said yes to God and joy paved the way forward to share the good news that God came. God came to be our neighbor in Jesus. God came to be in relationship with us so that we can be in relationship with others. Random encounters have the ability to be transformational if we are open and willing to be intentionally relational. I'm going to be really direct, and I'm going to be really honest. Sitting in church and listening to sermons and singing a few songs is not enough. It's a good start, but it's not enough for us to live out the life that God intended for us to live. A few weeks ago, we, those who were in the worship attendance, we went into the fellowship hall and we sat around some round tables. And we shared together. We shared about our curiosities. We shared about our joys. We shared about our struggles. We shared about how to be neighbors and our hopes. And I can tell you that as I looked through our responses, there was a very heavy underlying theme in all of our responses. Many have to do with the aftermath of COVID. Many have to do with, with, um, with what, what are we going to do? How are we going to be? How is this going to affect us moving forward? And here's the other thing. Almost every single one of our responses spoke loudly that we all desire relationship with one another. We are grieving the losses that we have experienced. And it's like we have been punched in the gut. Now, though I don't condone violence, I think it's time that we just sucker punch COVID right in the face and do something about it. If we miss, if we really truly miss seeing the people that used to sit or sit alongside us, if we miss seeing our friends, our neighbors, and our classmates, if we really miss them, then we need to call them and we need to go see them and we need to do something about it. We need to talk to them. We don't need to talk about them. We don't need to talk at them. We need to talk to them. We need to restart our relationships. If we really, if we really want to see our church full again, it's not up to me. It's not up to just me. It's not up to just Jordan. It's not just in the children's program. It's not just up to West for the youth program. It's not just up to the outreach committee, guys. It is up to every single one of us working together as the body of Christ. And we can no longer just merely open the doors on Sunday mornings and wait for people to just walk through them. Because they won't come in. They won't come in unless they have an invitation, unless they have a relationship with us and we have a relationship with our community, guys, it's, it's not going to happen. 
without a real, authentic relationship so that we can invite people in to be a part of something that's so much better than being alone. Now, when I say full, well, I'm not talking about filling our church up numerically so that we can feel good about how big and about how important that we are. I'm talking about the way that we can be full, we can be a full church by the way that we are nurturing and the way that we are raising each other up into a life of discipleship so others can see not how big we are, but about how big God is. We got to pull a Philip. We got to recognize and meet people where they're at. I mean, that's it. That's what Thanksgiving's all about, Charlie Brown. Maybe that was a different show. But it's about growing into the fullness of life it, 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 that is offered to everyone. The Ethiopian went away rejoicing. He went away with a fullness that no food, no possessions, no anything could ever bring except for the fullness that he received knowing that he was part of the body of Christ. The Ethiopian went away rejoicing because he, through conversation, through someone taking the time to stop to talk to him, not at him, but to listen to him and then to recognize him and to welcome him. The Ethiopian was full because his faith was affirmed. Now, I doubt that day that all of his questions were answered, you know, upon his baptism. But what that did is it gave him, his baptism gave him a gift of acceptance into a people and to a community of people who were willing to walk through life with him. We need to be like the Ethiopian. We need to be able to ask for help and be open to welcoming people into us to, so that we can also have a greater understanding. We do indeed have so very, very much to be thankful for. Do others see the gratefulness for the grace of God within us? Are we living worshipfully with our whole beings? Are we willing to share the goodness and the faithfulness of God through our actions to nurture up others in a life of discipleship so that all may live out a full life. We got to pull a Wanda and a Jamal. We got to open ourselves up to take time to be in relationships with people unlike us. We got to be willing to do what grandmas and Jesus followers do. And us feed everyone. We need to be hospitable. We need to be like Jamal and have a sense and be open to a sense of newness and to be courageous to ask if we can have a seat at the table. On Thursday, as you sit down to eat your Thanksgiving meal, Take some time to think about the work and the care and the adventure someone had to go through to put the food on the table. 
Or if you're the one preparing the meal, think about why you are doing what you are doing. Because it takes time to put the food on the table, from making the grocery list to going to the store and all of the preparation. And most likely, someone is doing that for you, or you, or you are doing that for someone else because you deeply care about them or they deeply care about you. No one intends for others to walk away from the Thanksgiving table hungry. Thanksgiving dinner is not a fast food, one and done experience. It is about gathering. It's about sharing. It's about being. It's about rejoicing. Christ wants the very same for all of us in our relationships with each other. He does not desire for us to leave one another's company without some form of rejoicing. If we want to be full, if we want to be truly full, then we got to do the work. This is not a drive-through life. We must make every single moment count. Conversations matter. Relationships matter. Inclusion matters. You matter. It all matters because we all matter to God. And living that out every single day makes every day a thanksgiving. And when we can do that, then we can truly experience the fullness of life so that we can be together thankfully full each and every day day of the year. Amen. of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mighty and not I, but through Christ.
the Savior, he will say, I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold my shadow. Now, you know when I teach and talk and preach, I'm preaching and talking to myself, too. This is on all of us, guys. We are so thankful. We are so blessed for the opportunity to come together each week and to worship and to learn and to grow and to be challenged and to be in fellowship with one another. This is such a beautiful gift that not everyone has. I am so thankful for that. I don't know what God was doing when he sent me here, but he must have been had a great sense of humor. So, you know, and I'm very thankful for that. But what are you all thankful for this morning? Just shout it out. There's got to be some things on your heart you're thankful for.
What a blessing. What a gift you all are. I think you're so great. We need to share that with everybody else. You have good love to share. It's good stuff. Great stuff. Let's go to God together in prayer for our friends and neighbors and one another. Ever faithful Lord, ever giving Son, ever present Spirit, for the many gifts you grant us and the opportunity to enjoy these things, God, for your daily provision and for the constant signs of your healing love, for the hope amidst despair and the light which always shines, for all these things, God, sometimes thank you is just so inadequate. But it's all we have to show our gratitude in word and in thought and in action. So thank you, Lord. God, may our thanks move beyond words to transform us into thankful people, to to faithful people, seeing people, people who, who see need and see the need to act. People who love to live and live to love. People who serve you by serving others. Father, help us to be amongst those who who include the excluded and bring in those who are marginalized that when the opportunities come our way to be healers of division and hurt, to to be peacemakers and restorers, we won't be found wanting. Loving and personal, Father, we bring before you now those people and, and those things that are closest to us and occupy our minds at this time. We lift those concerns of our hearts to you silently or out loud now. Mighty, wonderful Father, we bring before you people and issues from around our country and our world, and including those who we will never know personally, but who remain our sisters and brothers in you. Transforming, healing Father, help us make the light, make the light shine in dark places to make peace known in violent places, and to bring hope to despondent places. Our prayers, spoken and silent, have been brought to you, Father. And we do all of this in the name of your Son, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's stand together.
Following this service, we'll have a brief time of fellowship, uh, some coffee and good conversation. And then um, after that, uh, we can gather and get this place all ready for Advent, for the great welcoming and the homecoming and the welcoming of that new little baby that will be here in just a few short weeks. And no, I'm not expecting. So... <laughs> but we all are together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings that surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. Go now in a great sense of gratitude and thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs>